On this program, Dr. Hulda Clark will discuss five of them, heart disease, cancer, stroke, lung disease, and diabetes, and the remaining five in the next part. Because neither I nor anyone appearing on this program is trained in medical science, no statements or beliefs should be construed as medical advice. Consult your licensed medical practitioner for that. Much of the information presented on this program has not been scientifically proven and is theoretical, although it is believed to be true. Many, if not most, mainstream medical professionals will not agree with the views expressed. No claim is made on this program of any cure, and the guest is not a medical professional. Pregnant women and people wearing a pacemaker must never use the experimental electrical system used in the demonstrations on this program. Whatever data you receive is theoretical and is offered for informational purposes only. The theories result from personal research. You're also advised not to use any device you see on this program without expert assistance and to take precautions against electrical shock or damage to your body. In some cases, death could result from the use of the electrical experimental device seen on this program or the failure to follow these guidelines. You must assume all risk if you use this information. The number one killer of women and men in America is cardiovascular disease. It has been number one every year since 1900, except in 1918. In 1997, 41.2% of all deaths were due to cardiovascular diseases. More than one in five Americans, or 59,700,000, suffer from one or more types of cardiovascular disease. 50 million Americans have high blood pressure, the leading contributor to heart disease. More than two of every five Americans die of cardiovascular disease. More than 2,600 Americans die every day of cardiovascular disease, an average of one death every 33 seconds. It claims more lives each year than the next seven leading causes of death. Black death rates for heart disease are 40% higher than whites. You say in every disease, every disease is caused by a parasite in conjunction with a pollutant. Yes. I would like for you to uh, tell me what you would name, keeping that rule in mind, parasite, what you would call our number one killer. What would you call heart disease? Uh, there are a number of different heart diseases, but altogether, the heart is having a hard time, and I would always go and investigate which uh, parasite it is and which major toxin. I already know that it's going to be dirofilaria because I've uh, searched for it in so many different kinds of heart disease, whether it's valve disorder or, or arrhythmia or, 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 the, or the other thing. Dirofilaria. Yes. That's the parasite. In yes. other words... It's a little roundworm. It affects our dogs. And the um, cooperating toxin is cobalt. Cobalt. Yes. And where would we get the parasite in the case of heart disease? The parasite, living parasite is in dogs, but the eggs would be in dirt. In dirt. Such as we get on our produce. Okay, if I live with a dog, according to your theory, would my chances of having heart disease be better because this parasite is common to dogs? I would think so, but that would be theory. I advocate sterilizing the food. It isn't just parasite eggs that, that we would get off. There is a tremendous payback that, that comes from washing your produce a certain way. Uh, uh, one minute in hot water and then a second minute in hot water. Each one, after each one, you dry it and, uh, and start over. That removes the wax, the pesticides, the azo dyes, the heavy metals, and the parasite eggs, uh, most of them, uh, all together. So that's what I advocate as an improved hygiene for cooking.